Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna do a video on, well, I guess it's gonna be a video series on teardown, checkout, rebuild, reassembly on a 12 valve, P-pump 12 valve. Um, I talked to, well, I posted it on a couple pages on Facebook. So this is the one that I was talking about doing on Facebook. <clears throat> so this is the engine, if any of you guys have watched, I think I've done uh maybe one or two videos where the, the smashed up dually was in the video well, the engine in that truck was there was something wrong with i guess we're going to find out what was wrong um this is the engine out of it it's a 175 horse p pump 12 valve um it's a complete engine unmolested well until i'm done with it um engine so um we're going to get into it so something that I do recommend now I just when I'm doing it I literally I just take a bucket and I throw all the bolts in now I realize that a lot of you guys maybe haven't done one or haven't done very many so what I recommend if you are new to doing this um, heat is your friend bolts stuck that type of shit um, heat is definitely going to be your friend also Ziploc bags Buy yourself a couple boxes of Ziploc freezer bags or something that doesn't have to be Ziploc, but let's say Ziploc freezer bags. So that's ones that I use um, when I'm doing it. Um, so on engines that I've never done, that's how I do it. I bag them up, mark on what they are. Um, and for you guys that haven't done a lot, it's maybe not a bad idea just so that you guys, you know, you don't have to figure where the nuts and bolts go. Not many nuts, but mostly bolts. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm gonna get after it here. Um, we're gonna I'm just gonna strip some stuff off the front or off the top Sorry And then we'll strip all the stuff off the front. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this part into time-lapse um, Just it's a relatively lengthy process. I guess you would say um, and then I might stop into it or stop in the videos in a few spots just to uh, To show you know, how do you take this off or how you take that off if there's something funky um, but for the most part um this you know it's it's nuts and bolts guys you know it's if you've had a, a small block chevy or part or any engine for that matter it's the same as that just bigger um they're very simple engines you don't need to be tearing it apart just don't wreck shit um and then you're good to go uh something i do recommend though um especially if you have time is the bolts for your exhaust manifolds you can see i've soaked these they haven't been soaking that long i do recommend hose that with any sort of penetrating oil um, you know, uh, you guys down in the States, PB blaster, I think is a, is a real common one down there. I personally have never used it. I don't even think I've ever seen it in the stores here, but that doesn't mean that I haven't. I just never noticed it. Um, and then any other, you know, bolts and stuff that are hanging out, you know, your, your bolts for your, um, or your nuts for your alternator bracket, that type of stuff. Um, any nuts that like kind of look crusty, shoot some of that on. And then while you're doing other stuff, it gets a little time to soak. But anyways, on with the show, I suppose. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to throw this into time lapse now, um, and we'll bang this stuff out pretty quick. Um, so, you know, make the video not too long because I prefer to make the video not too long. Uh, I think in this first video, it's just going to be um, I'll get a bunch of the stuff stripped off. We'll get the cylinder head off, get the exhaust manifold, all the front stuff off, and then uh, we'll call it quits on that one. And then I'll do the bottom end. Um, I'll post this video hopefully tonight and then I'll try to do the bottom end tomorrow and I'll post that video tomorrow um, And then it might be a day or two um, before I post any more videos But just because I'll have to get everything washed and all that type of stuff. So Anyways, we'll get after it here and uh, thanks for watching um, And do please subscribe. I appreciate the guys that are subscribing um, Just helps me get motivation to do more videos, I guess so um, thanks for subscribing and uh, we'll get on the show now.
So pulling the injectors out of these things, um, there is a, a little pipe tool and I've had, I have actually made some in the past and sold them, but I don't have any in the moment. This is what we use for doing it. <clears throat> it's just a slide hammer. Obviously, while you're in the truck, it's uh, a little bit more difficult, but when it's sitting on, on the bench, they literally come out pretty easy, no matter how stuck in they are. So, I'm not gonna bore you guys by watching me pull all of these, but just wanted to show. And these ones aren't too bad, oh yeah. I would say that cylinder's got some issues. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. You can see the aluminum transfer on the end of the no and the end of the nozzle. So number five ejector is screwed up. So I would say number five cylinder is probably going to be shrapnel inside. Um, but I'm going to put this back on time lapse. But I just I wanted to show you guys when you pull the uh, the banjo bolts out of your return lines. Um, that is something that I always bag up and then the banjo fitting the couple banjo fittings that come out of your fuel filter housing um, You know the one that screws in here the other ones are just the same but these little buggers are super expensive That's the one that's, that is the return line. You see a little hole in it. They're super expensive little bolts So I always here again ziploc bag. It's not a ziploc bag, but I always put them inside a bag Make sure you put them in a bag. You don't want to lose them I think here in Canada, they're like, oh, 27 bucks each or something. It's ridiculous. I'm sure you can probably buy them off eBay or something cheaper. But um, anyways, I'm going to go back to time lapse. Um, like I said, most of this, this stuff's pretty straightforward as far as taking it apart. So I didn't figure, um, I didn't figure I really needed to go into a major, a major video as far as that goes. I'll stop when I get to the pump and I'll do an actual, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm going to rip off the rest of this stuff and pull those injectors out. Um, I'll probably pull, I'll pull the accessories off the front timing cover and then we'll pull the head off and then I'll do um, a little, we'll talk a little bit about that. Gonna pull the head off. Um, when you're taking the head bolts out, <clears throat> you really should do basically the opposite of your torque spec. So you're gonna work your way from the outside in. Is what you're supposed to do. Um, and usually the head, like obviously this one actually came apart really well, did well. But I did notice that it had some marks on the, uh, oh, did I miss a bolt? Um, I did notice that it uh, had some marks on the head bolts, so. So the head has been off at some point, or somebody retorqued it, but I imagine it's probably been off, but. Let's see what kind of core carnage we got on the go here. Oh yeah. Well, boys, I would say number five cylinder has seen better days. Let's just take a gander here.
So, there's number five. Yeah, it shouldn't look like that. So, this was definitely cratered by somebody. You can actually see ring land down in number six. The ring come out of, ring bits came out. This thing was running, we drove it in here. So at the very least, this is gonna be a good candidate to uh, hopefully to rebuild, show you guys. Yeah, it's like shrapnel. Um, show you guys what this thing looks like. And you know, it's nice to be able to show you guys, here's the bottom of the head. I would say that maybe those valves are no good. Hopefully the head's still usable, but we won't know until we get it cleaned up and checked. But like I said, this thing did roll over. I guess uh, let's roll it over a bit here and just steal a bolt out of the old guinea pig. I got them tight enough. Can't get them out. I'm gonna put you guys back up on a stand here for a second. I knew this thing had some issues, but I wasn't sure exactly what was wrong with it. it sounded like a wrist pin, but I suppose that's kind of like a wrist pin. Good thing we didn't let it run long. We would have, but it would have exit block side stage. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Perfect. Not cracked. By the look of it, just seen via shrapnel. I would say likely it had an injection failure. I don't know if the pump is any good or not, but likely it had an injection failure or it ate something. God knows at this point, it's pretty hard to tell. But anyways, um, I guess what we'll do at this point, um, I don't know if I should pull the pump off or if I should pull the valves out of the head. Actually, I should probably pull the valves out of the head. Um, and we'll let, see what time it is. So that's one thing with these, uh, a lot of these videos, guys, I do them uh, after work. So, you know, I've already been here for, well, not always per se working here, but I've been up and doing things since uh quarter to six this morning and it's right now uh 20 after seven so but that's pretty much every day for me now something that you do want to take into consideration is you want the dowel pin um, sometimes you get stuck in the head you want to make sure you remove that usually they pull out pretty easy and there again they just want to make sure um yeah, this one's still in the block. But so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to toss her down. Um, you know, if you guys were planning on not having it surfaced, which I do recommend, but if you're not having it surfaced, um, I would uh, recommend setting it down on plywood, clean plywood, um, on top of cardboard or something like that to worry, so you don't have to worry about scratching the surface. Um, for you know, I'm not going to scratch the surface doing what I'm doing enough to worry about it because I know that it's going to be surfaced. So, but just so I see it in the comments. Now, something that I do want to mention, if you guys are bringing your head into a machine shop, I have done a video on this. Make sure you pull all the sensors, nuts, bolts, brackets, anything that you want back, take out. Because we get so many cylinder heads. I shouldn't say us, machine shops in general, get so many cylinder heads in and you, you have to take brackets and stuff off because if you don't then you can't get it into the surfacer you can't get it into the pressure tester 
um, you know, and then you're boxing the stuff up and you got 20 cylinder heads apart. Sometimes we have 50 cylinder heads apart. Hard to keep track of everything. So please just make sure you guys, before you take it to your machine shop, do yourself a favor and pull all the extra stuff off. So I'll take my own advice here and we'll pull the extra stuff off. I know there is a few things that you don't have to pull off. If you do a rule of thumb that you don't leave anything on there, um, that's a good rule of thumb to not have, you know, and, and it's one of those things that takes more time. So a lot of your machine shops are gonna charge you for doing it. So make yourself easier on yourself. You know, take, take a picture, um, take a picture of the, uh, how the stuff goes on there. If you think you're gonna have a problem remembering and uh and you don't have to worry about it right but so let's uh this thing apart here so um this this head hasn't doesn't look like it's if it has been done it still has stock valve springs on it um you know there again which is fine um i personally like the 60 pound valve springs you have to be running a good oil if you're doing that but that's what i prefer um yeah Anyways, I'm gonna grab the tool. We'll rip these things out of there, and then uh, that way I can uh, I can throw this thing in the jet and get it washed up for tomorrow. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll probably have enough time to pull the injection pump off, which there again is super easy to do, especially at this point, being there's nothing in the way. Well, let's, I'll, we'll get out of that real quick here. So I'm not gonna bore you guys doing all of these, because doing one is the same as doing all of them. But I will, I'll show you one just for the guys. I have done, uh, this is the same tool that I use in, in my uh, valve spring video it's just a torque tech tool decent product for the price makes it simple lots of times this is not how we assemble them because we have it on the seat and guide machine but for this purpose taking it apart it works just fine now something i do recommend make sure you put oil make sure you lube because everybody's happier when there's lube Lots of times it'll stick on you. You don't need to hammer this big, but just give her a little tap. Now there again, this is something, these are small pieces. Ziploc bag's a good idea. Um, now if you're taking these valves out and planning on just lapping them, putting them back in and cleaning stuff, I do recommend, I do recommend um, keeping the stuff in order. If it's going to the machine shop um, and getting a machine, it does not matter because all the all the surfaces are going to be recut anyway. But what I'll do is I'm going to put this back on time lapse here. I'll bang these off. We'll flip it over. We'll inspect some stuff and just see what it looks like here. All right, back on her here. So, got all the valve springs undone. Like I said, you don't have to keep these in order if they're, well, the retainers and the springs you don't need to keep in order anyway. They're all identical. I would reflect, recommend replacing the valve springs. Even if you're not going to do anything special, the very least I would recommend to go to a 60 pound valve spring um, at the very least. Uh, if you, you don't have to, you don't really want to, but I, you know, like I recommend to be running more RPM than factory anyway, um, because, uh, they're way nicer to drive. So at the very least I'd be doing, uh, if you don't have 4k springs, uh, doing a 3k kit, if you have, uh, 4k springs, or if you have val uh, valve springs, at least 60 pounders, um, do a 4k kit. Uh, they are a little bit. I don't know if choppy is the right word for it um, on the throttle when you do the 4k kit but it's a much nicer as soon as you get used to it 
add a little bit of uh, a little bit of return spring and uh, much nicer. But anyways, let's get this thing flipped up. Let's see what we have here. They also have a bit of wear on them. Not uncommon for how many kilometers are on it. And there would be a bad valve. That would be, whoop. That one's for going around corners. It's a free valve. Anybody want a free valve? I th Probably not, so it's going in the strap. So, intake valve. It actually doesn't look shrapneled, um, but I wouldn't take the chance. Valves aren't that expensive for these things. Uh, yeah. All of these cylinders, yeah. Things actually not in that bad shape, but I don't know if you guys will be able to see that real well. But you can see the pitting, and it's actually cupped too. Pretty good. Um, but, and then the same with the intake there again, it's hard to see in the camera, but it, it basically the, the, it should be a, this on this application, it's 30 degrees intake and 45 degrees exhaust in factory. Um, so what happens is this actually gets cupped because the valve is softer than the seat in the head. These are integral seats, so they have to be cut if you need to put seats in it. Uh, and most of the time you don't, your recession is going to be a little bit lower, uh, but I prefer the recession to be lower. Um, then you don't have piston the valve clearance if you ever put a bigger camshaft, or if you are putting a bigger camshaft. But the only thing that kind of sucks is that when you have a piston failure, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that real well, but there's actually aluminum transfer in the hole. Yeah, I guess you guys can, you should be able to see it there a bit. So I'm gonna have to chip all that out of there because you don't want that going through a fresh turbo. And I'll definitely have to uh, inspect the turbo real well. Um, and in my, uh, in a couple videos I talked about Something you want to check on these things is they do they do crack in here and crack from injector to valve seat. The valve seats like to crack. And then also in another spot is down inside here they like to crack. They like to crack down in here. And then sometimes they will crack on the outside too, kind of in here. But if you're magnafluxing and pressure testing the head, um, you'll know if it's cracked. But that is one thing if you have coolant in your oil, very first thing I would recommend checking, especially on a 12 valve, is pull valve covers off and you will see a trail. The next one I get, I will actually make a video of it. Um, I haven't, there was one kind of when I first started doing YouTube, but I, I didn't do a video on it. Wish I did, but I didn't do a video on it. But So that's something you want to check out. So at this point, um, what we're going to do is this thing's going to go into a bath. It's going to get bath. Get all the oil crap corruption off of it and uh then we will uh i'll do there'll be probably uh, probably going to be maybe two videos on the cylinder head if not three there's a lot of work goes into a cylinder head uh, i don't know if a lot of people realize the amount of time that goes into a cylinder head it's uh there's there's quite a bit that go into it quite a bit that go into the whole process um because i'm into this right now for uh getting the head off and stripping that stuff as it stands right now i'm into it for a couple hours so and really i you know there again i know exactly the tools i need so i don't have to go looking for anything uh you know that helps immensely but um so what we'll do here quick is it won't take me very long it we're gonna pull the injection pump off now if you guys are pulling the injection pump off and just the injection pump this is actually kind of the perfect time to show you guys a few things so something that you're going to need to do and there's more than one way to skin a cat this is the way that i do it so there's this bolt here and there's a bracket on the bottom of the pump i'll show you when i get the pump off but um there's this bolt uh, that bolt and that holds the bracket for the bottom of the pump sometimes you have to remove it sometimes you don't um depending on if it's in the truck and then that's the the actual oh, yeah you might, you might see it 
so that bolt there right the 10 mil head bolt right beside the um, oil pressure sensor um, that bolt if you undo that then it'll slide back it just depends the easiest what the easiest sometimes it's easier to undo that one sometimes it's easier to undo the other two and then now with the pump or with the, the cylinder head in the way these bolts are a lot harder to get so um, there's this bolt this bolt so these two bolts this oil line has to come undone you can undo, undo it at the bottom or you can do it up here there again personal preference and then there's uh two bolt two nuts sorry i shouldn't say bolts nuts um right there on the injection pump and then the injection pump being that we've already um you know you have to undo your return line which is right here obviously it's undone because it's not in the truck anymore and you have to undo that fuel line that in the video you would have seen me in the time lapse you would have seen uh, me undoing and taking the fuel filter housing off you have to undo that obviously and i usually pull the fuel filter housing out of the way just gives you a little bit more space because it's literally right here so it gives you a little bit more space but let's rip this thing off quick here and uh we'll, we'll go from there so pulling the gear off pulling the gear off um 30 mil nut and then there is a puller you can't make pullers they're a super simple piece of flat bar and two bolts you can make a puller you can buy pullers. Um, I will have them on my website when I get the website up, um, as well as timing kits and blah, blah, blah. But um, we'll get this thing ripped off quick. And uh, yeah, and I'll give you, a, I'll show you a couple things when we get it ripped off. So I'll get, put you guys back on time lapse and uh, we'll get after it. so now we got the pump off and I just I'll show you a couple things pretty simple straightforward like I said um, depending on what you want to do I just pulled this bolt out that's that bottom one I was talking about that goes right here goes right beside the oil filter or the uh, oil pressure sending unit um, those four bolts like I said easy to do obviously a lot easier to do when the engine's out of the truck and you're pulling the engine apart uh, something that you do want to do is this thing will leak oil for like six months so um, if you're gonna put it somewhere, you wanna have it tipped up like that, make sure, like this is a, a drain bench, so it's just gonna drain to the other side, doesn't matter. Um, but it will make a mess. Also, if you're shipping your pump to somebody, uh, make sure, what I recommend doing is you just take your, stick it in your vise. Don't stick it on the plunger side uh, or on the body. Um, you know, you can stick it, take that, this, stick it in the vise and hang it straight down, maybe on just a little bit of an angle. Um, and let it drain a couple days because it will drain for a long time um, and it'll make one the guys that are shipping the head lots of times won't ship the head because the end box ends up covered in oil you get it back pump guy gets pumped the box is completely full of oil everything's a mess box is falling apart anyway it's just easier make sure you uh, drain your pump obviously the ve's don't have that issue just have to make sure you drain the fuel make sure you drain the fuel out of them too um, so anyways, that's what I'm, I'm going to knock this one off because basically we're at the point where now we're into um, tearing the bottom end apart. Um, and I will try, I'm pretty sure I'll be able, I'll have time to do it tomorrow night before I go home. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know, yeah, we'll get the bottom end all ripped apart and then uh, we'll get everything washed up. Um, just for the guys, I'm proud to imagine the guys are going to ask about washing. Um, I have two... Two jet washes, which are kind of like big um, dishwashers, basically. Um, here, I'll actually. So, just to show you guys what it looks like. And then the table turns inside there. So, it blasts stuff off pretty good. It's not a super corrosive material that's in there. Um, but we do have a hot tank if we need a hot tank stuff to get rust and stuff out um, But as far as uh, the environmental side of things the chemicals aren't as good as they used to be so it doesn't peel stuff off as good I got the, one of the better products for doing it, but not as good as I'd like it to do But um, we still have to do a little bit of buffing here and there, but for the most part um, but This is a perfect one for the video because you get to see some carnage, which is nice to see some carnage and uh, anyways uh, like subscribe 
Um, if you got any comments, hit me down below. Anything you want me to go over that I didn't go over maybe, um, there again, hit me down below. Um, oh, something I did want to show. So if you guys are asking about um, rack plugs, so there's your rack plug in the front of the pump. Now, if you look here, you can see in the front of that case and there's like a little divot for it to go into. Um, if you're not pulling the pump off or you don't want to pull, you're not setting timing and doing a bunch of other stuff, what you can do is you can, I, and I, I haven't done one in years because I usually just do it while I'm taking the pump off, but you can grind this face down, like that edge, and you can get that out of there. There again, I've never seen an issue with guys doing it. This is not the way, I have done it, don't get me wrong, a long time ago, uh, but I don't do it that way anymore. But just for guys that are asking, um, you can you can do that and uh yeah anyways uh like i said hit me up in the comments if you got anything and uh we'll catch you guys tomorrow